QuickBooks Online 2023. Progress invoicing example two, recognize revenue for month number three and invoice client for month number four. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file. We started up in a prior presentation. Remembering we're in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in by right clicking the tab up top to duplicate. Right clicking the tab up top again to duplicate again. Back to the tab to the middle. Reports on the left hand side. We want to open up the balance sheet as that's thinking tab to the right reports on the left. This time the profit and loss closing the ham boogie changing the range. We want to go from 010125 to 06325. I want to see it on a month by month side by side for the month by month and run it. That's what we have thus far tapping to the left. We're going to close the ham boogie changing the range in. 010125 to 06325 and let's see this by a classes breaking out a lot of we want a classy report a lot of class happening here okay then we're going to go to the first tab we're going to then go down to the projects on the left hand side and let's go into the projects so we're within the projects so let's recap what we've done thus far in our excel worksheet because it's a little bit easier to tell the story so we started with an estimate. We gave out the estimate. Total of the estimate was 100000 When the job was accepted, we wanted a $10,000 down payment. So we didn't record revenue, but billed the client for the 10000 And then we recorded expenses for the month of operation that actually started on month two. Uh, and these were actual expenses that we recorded. We recorded expenses for month number three and we recorded the related revenue not not in alignment with our billing structure but rather in alignment with the percentage completion concept that we we did with this calculation here and then on month number three we did the same thing we we basically calculated our actual expenses and then we had this percentage of completion and now we want to be calculating or recording the revenue so let's just recap, by the way, I, I did not record this last bit in our Excel worksheet, although we did do it in QuickBooks. So we'll record that here now when we did the work here and we'll record that on, I'm going to say 331 and it's going to be cost of goods sold for all the stuff that we did, material, labor, overhead, I'm going to put in a cost of goods sold for the 19 total 19527 the other side let's add some more blue space i'm going to need some more blue spaces and let's say let's just add one more for now to to and then we'll add some more after 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 okay and then the other side's going to uh cost of goods sold we just paid cash cash went out the door for it to get it done all right and then if i record that over here I'm just going to say cost of goods sold is right here. I'm going to say F2 plus F2, F2. And that's going to be 19,527. And then the checking F2 plus F2. And there we go. And so now we're back in balance. And notice here, when I do this in like a little worksheet format, we, we can only see this. We, don't, we can't break it out by month. So that's why in, a, in in QuickBooks, it's nice that we have this revenue that can be broken out over here. 
uh, on a month by month. So we kind of add a dimension in like the database program, the total still coming out to the 16, uh, 15, 621 for that time frame that we could see in our little worksheet, 15, but it gives us some more dimensions in QuickBooks, although it adds complexity to do so because we have to deal with these forms and whatnot in order to calculate these journal entries. All right, so now we're gonna recognize the revenue. So I recorded this on our side. If I go to this first tab and we look at these the costs, for example, we can go into the costs of goods sold and we had these expenses that we entered. And when I entered this expense item, I made it billable. Now, when I say billable and I did a 30% markup, we're not gonna actually give the bill to the client because we're billing the client based on our billing structure here that we came up with, uh, that we came up with in accordance with our estimate. So, but we are gonna make it billable so that we can then record the revenue with an invoice because the invoice is typically the form used to record revenue. <laughs> so now we're gonna pull this into an invoice, not so we can give it to the client, but so we can record the revenue in our QuickBooks system. So let's go back to our projects, project number two, close the hand buggy. And then I'm gonna say, we're just gonna make an invoice. And the invoice is not gonna come from the estimate because that's what I'm using when I actually want to give the invoice to the client but rather I'm gonna pull in these billable items, which is gonna help me to calculate the actual revenue on a percentage of completion kind of concept. So if I go through this thing here and say, okay, that's good. And this is gonna happen on, we'll say 331, okay. And so now it pulled in the materials, labor and overhead and put it into, and then it did the markup over here. And so that looks good. Now the invoice is typically, going to be increasing the accounts receivable and the other side is going to be assigned by these line items revenue for our purposes what do we want to have happen we want the revenue to be going up but we want the other side to go to work in process so if i see that on this side on, a, on our excel sheet we're, we're going to let's do this on our excel sheet so i had my 19 527 the percent completion is that divided by my total estimated cost not including the markup that i'm going to say here and then we're going to say if i multiply that percent times the total revenue then the revenue that i should be recognizing related to that cost should be 25 385. so if i was to do a journal entry down here let's add a little bit more blue so i can do it and then i'll we'll make another area to enter because i'm getting too far down but one more one more transactions down here just one more 331 we're gonna say i'm gonna put the revenue on top even though it's a credit because that's the first thing i, I think about right so i'm gonna say the revenue is a credit of that 19 of not 19 of the 25 uh 385 and then the other side i don't want it going to to accounts receivable but rather work in process which is easy to do from a journal entry standpoint but we have to do a little bit more finagling, a little bit more uh, finessing on the QuickBooks side if I wanna use an invoice instead of a journal entry, which I do. And so that's what we will do. So we'll, let's go back up top and record this. I'm gonna go into the revenue, say F2 plus F2 and go down 25, 385. And the other side was going to work in process, the WIP account, F2 plus F2 and work in process boom so that puts us uh, back in balance here that's what we'd want to do but if i record this in quickbooks again you could do it with a journal entry to just record a journal entry but i'd like to have my revenue typically recorded uh with invoices because that's the form so sometimes when i look at my reports and, and track the revenue recording the journal entries are useful for that. And it's also easier sometimes to assign it to the classes and the projects and, and be able to sort the information also by project and customer. So we have our, our invoice laid out here, but I needed to make it go to work in process. So all I'm gonna do is tweak this bottom bit. The bottom bit needs to be tweaked. And then we're gonna say, this is gonna be 
negative 25, 385.1, and this is gonna go to class two. So now the invoice usually increases accounts receivable, but it's zeroed out. So we're not gonna increase the accounts receivable. All of this stuff is gonna increase a revenue account because that's what the items do. And then the other side is, is instead of going to AR is gonna to go to work in process. So we just made a journal entry in essence with an invoice. All right, so let's save and close it. So then if I go back to my reports, we can see then then what happened. K Paso, the work in process is impacted here, which is what we want to have happening. And I can see it broken out by class because I, I assigned classes to it. So it's a classy report, which gives us a little bit more information if there are multiple uh, accounts with work in process in it, that's useful. Tab to the right and we can say, okay, now over here, I've got my revenue broken out this way in March. So it's it's applied to the proper time frame now because I'm saying this is the costs that we incurred in order to generate that revenue. And that's, that's basically what we want. That's kind of uh, what we're looking for. We can also do, if I duplicate this, our profit and loss by class. We can do a classy profit and loss. Let's take this for the whole year, 12, 31, 2, 5, and do this for the whole year because then I can see the multiple classes. So now you've got the multiple classes that add up. That's quite useful when we're trying to analyze like our full job report. That's why the classes, I think, add another level uh, that is useful. All right, so now let's let's go to the next step. And we'll, since we'll just continue on here, we're gonna bill the client now. So now we're over here. This has been done. Dishes are done, dude. Sorry, that's in some movie. I can't even remember what movie that is, but I think it had, anyway. What am I on over here? I'm on the, I'm on, we're gonna bill, we're gonna bill now uh, for the for the next month, for the 30,000. So this was done and now I'm on this one, boom. So let's do that. We're gonna bill them. I don't have much room on my worksheet over here because I don't wanna keep going down. So I'm gonna add another worksheet to the side. So to do that, I'm gonna put my cursor, let's put it on P and I need like one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna put it on P, one, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna right click on those columns and insert, boom. And then what I'd like to do is format them like these ones. So I'm gonna put my cursor on K over to, over to N, K to N, and then format paint. And I'll put that right here. So it widens out those cells. Ah, okay. One, two, three, four. Home tab, format painter. One, two, three, four. Okay. So that looks good. Looks good. Okay. So then I might be able to hide these ones. So do I need to hide it? Maybe I'll just keep them there. I don't really need to hide it. I don't think it's not going to throw us off. We can see what's happening. So then we're gonna say accounts receivable is gonna go up because we're just gonna bill the client. This is gonna be an invoice that actually goes out. But the other side, I don't want it to go to revenue this time because this is just one that I wanna get paid on and, and, not, uh, and not one that I wanna record the revenue because I record the revenue with the other format according to the revenue recognition thing. So this is just gonna be paid according to our payment schedule of 30,000 because that's what we told the client that we were gonna pay them and we're gonna stick to that. This isn't a government job that we completely underestimated because that's what you do with those ones. We have clients that are actually want competent work done. It's not, we didn't, we didn't get it because we know, we know some politician or something and that's how we got the job. Any case, we're gonna say F2 plus F2 is gonna be 30,000. All right, and then the billing down here is gonna be F2 plus F2 and 30,000. So there we have it. Let's go and do that over on in uh, QuickBooks. And so we'll just bill the client. So now we're gonna actually send out the next bill for the following month in accordance with our payment structure. So I'm gonna send out another invoice, but this is the invoice that's actually gonna go out to the client. And I'm gonna base this one on the estimate 
that we originally made using our progress invoicing. This time the percent will be 30 percent. 30%, 30% pulls it in. Boom, nicely structured. This is gonna be date of 4-1. And you've got this beautiful uh, structure down here of our of our uh, items that we're going to be invoicing for. Okay, so that looks good. This would increase the accounts receivable for that 30,000 and the other side would be going to the revenue accounts. And in this case, we want accounts receivable to go up. So I need a 30,000 down here, but I don't want the other side to go to revenue. So all of these, I could like replace these with one line item that doesn't go to revenue, but I kind of like the detail of having these line items here. So I'm just gonna say reverse that back out with just a, like a little journal entry at the bottom here, reduce the revenue for the total amount of negative 30,000. And this is gonna be class number two. And then I'm gonna put the other side into where I want it to go, which is the billings account, the billings account. Boom. And that's going to be for 30,000 and job number two. <clears throat> so now it's still going to increase accounts receivable because I have a balance down here of the 30,000, but the revenue is still going to go up by these amounts, but also right back down. So the detail will have this and then minus this and then back down to zero. And then the other side will go where we want it to go, which is into the billings account. So let's, that's the plan at least. Let's save it and close it and see if that is indeed what happens. Let's go to the balance sheet to check it out. And we know that then the accounts receivable is up to the 30,000. That looks like it should, right? And then the other side went into the billings account, which is here sorted by class, which is nice because, because now if I had multiple items in the billings account, I could sort it by class here, or I could go into it and sort it by customer in the detail report if I wasn't using class tracking and I can sort it this way. In order to sort it this way, by the way, you need a customer name field. And if you're using journal entries, you might not have a customer name field and you won't be able to sort this quite as easily likely. Okay, so I'm gonna go back on over, go to the, go to the revenue so we didn't recognize revenue with that one because we didn't want to recognize revenue based on that. We want to recognize revenue based on when we when we earn it in, in like a percentage of completion kind of conceptual concept. All right, now let's just re assume that they pay us the accounts receivable. That's why we sent them an invoice in that format because it's easy for them to turn around and pay us with it. And that would just simply be cash goes up and accounts receivable goes down and that would be for the 30,000. So let's do that. I'm going to say F2, F2, F2. And then this one is going to be F2 plus F2, 30,000. We record that one out. Accounts receivable goes back down, goes into the checking account. That's a straightforward transaction. No, no funny business happening here straightforward so we're going to go back on over and say we just received a payment 15 days later for that invoice we just sent out to the client let's bring it up 15 days and we'll say it goes into the checking account this is a received payment so it's going to be increasing the checking account and the other side is going to decrease the accounts receivable save it close it check it out tab into the right scrolling up running running it accounts receivable goes down and the checking account uh goes up that is it i think that is it all right so let's if i go over here and i say okay 30 let's just check our numbers this time because i didn't do that last time 32 4 55 work in process 4 2 3 0 9 4 2 3 0 8 50 rounding difference cool with that and 65,000 over here 65 and then net income 9763 9763 rounding difference i believe and the revenues at in total the 42308 and cost of goods 325 uh, 45 
42348 32545974697469747 you got to read left left to right left to right that's how we do that's how we read in english what do you okay profit if i look at the profit and loss by job then we can see it kind of broken out by job here which is nice and we're looking here at uh, at job number two and uh i can see it in by by month here so notice we've got our nice allocation based on kind of like a percentage of completion kind of concept and if i go to the first tab on the balance sheet and i bring this out to 12 31 to 5 if i have multiple items in these work in process accounts for most multiple jobs i can break it out this way or i can break it out by going into the job and sorting it by customer which i can only do if i'm using something that has items in the name fields which might not be the case if you're trying to use journal entries instead of the actual forms like like the invoices and then on the first tab we also of course have our progress income statement from a project perspective i can look at the project reports here and but they're basically job by job progress reports or project by project and it would be nice it's nice to be able to run the project reports by class two on the income statement because then you can get all the projects on one sheet you do have the full project report over here you'll remember but it's not quite as comprehensive project project summary report from 010125 123125 so there's that report but it's not quite as comprehensive as breaking it out by class that we saw in the income statement over here and again the classes give you that breakout of the work in process and uh and and the billings on the balance sheet which the projects uh at this time doesn't seem to to give you that breakout which is helpful okay